Along with the monument near Stonehenge, over 70 similar structures are built across Britain. Their distribution has led some to suggest they form a borderland between the west and east of the country. It's at one of these sites, known as Crickley Hill, that scientists have found evidence of Britain's first major civil war. Crickley Hill gives us a completely new picture of the scale of violence in prehistoric Britain. It's really the first time that we see evidence for warfare between separate communities or even groups of communities on a completely different scale to what went on previously. There's a sense that this was a planned event. Possibly the preparations went on for months beforehand, and this was a very committed action. The defenders included men, women, children. The attackers, however, were probably mostly adult male. Studies of tribal warfare provide some idea of the reasons behind these ancient battles. There may be a series of perceived injustices that build up over generations sometimes. And when things come to a boiling point, the violence that does break out can take the form of trying to actually exterminate a neighboring community. You would then be able to take over their resources, to take over their land, their cattle, perhaps even their women. 400 flint arrowheads found at Crickley Hill reveal how the conflict plays out. Distribution of arrowheads. It does look like the attackers have successfully overwhelmed the defense. Once you're inside, you're in much closer proximity to people, and fighting at that point would have become hand-to-hand. -hand. Crickley Hill is just one of a number of violent clashes in southern Britain. During this time of war, it appears monument building in these areas comes to a standstill. Excavated skulls from the period provide an insight into the savagery of the fighting. The original point of impact on this individual was from the side, perhaps even slightly behind, coming in from this direction. This was a very sharp, strong blow. This is a rounded fracture arc. There's no question that an injury of this severity penetrating the cranium, driving the bone fragments into the brain, would be instantly lethal. Schulting's analysis indicates no one is spared from the bloodshed. This is an adult female skull. In Neolithic societies, it seems possible to think that women were not always just innocent bystanders. They may have actually been involved in the conflict and indeed fighting themselves. In this case, we have adhering bone that's slightly depressed, and that indicates to me that there was a, a degree of elasticity in the bone that's typical of the bone being still fresh. In other words, that was a lethal injury. Large-scale hostilities in prehistoric Britain finally come to an end around 3,500 BC.